When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about some of the everyday uses of indicators, such as testing the pH of swimming pools and the pH of soils. In this video, we're going to cover the next top point, which is about an experiment you will have done or you will be doing in class. And it says perform a first-hand investigation as an experiment to prepare and test a natural indicator. So what you would have actually done is you would have grabbed some kind of vegetable. In many cases, you often grab, for example, a red cabbage. This is our red cabbage. And you would have actually made out of this red cabbage, you would have made your natural indicator. And one of the reasons why is because these nat natural indicators are made from extracts of vegetables. So for example, this red cabbage has anthocyanin in it. So some of this purple color for this one is actually from this anthocyanin. And this is used as the indicator. So this part, this extract of it, is useful for the indication part. So for example, this is something similar to what you'll be doing. You will have uh, different test tubes where you have you know, your bases, strong bases, weak bases, uh, strong acids and weak bases, and your water as well. And then you're going to have your indicators and test, a natural indicator you made yourself, and test if you can see if it changed color. So in this case, you change color for if it's a strong acid, such as hydrochloric acid, or a weaker acid, such as acetic acid, and you would have tested that. So that's what you would have made in class, and that's what we're going to cover right now in terms of the actual experiment. So for your materials, you would have had simple stuff like beakers. You would have had some test tubes as well, so at least five test tubes. Um, you would have had cabbage leaves or a similar kind of vegetables. You would have also used or might have used flower petals, such as rose. Rose petals would be an example. You'd have had some, had some to stir, so stirring rods, hot plates, or buns and burners to be able to warm up your beakers. You would have had a test tube rack to be able to put your test tubes in. And you would have had a cutting board and knife to be able to actually shred your cabbage and your petals into small bits. Now what you also would have had is you would have had some hydrochloric acid, acetic acid, ammonia, or sodium hydroxide solution. It doesn't have to be exactly the same ones, but just one is a strong acid, that's hydrochloric acid. One is a weaker acid, that's acetic acid. One is a strong base, that's sodium hydroxide. And one is the weaker base, which is ammonia. And for all of them, you would have had the same concentration. So 0 0.01 molar in this case. You might have used a different one, but that's often a concentration used in labs. And what you would have done is first, you would have, for both the cabbage and for your flower petals, you would have checked to first actually extract that important part. So for a cabbage was anthocyanin. And the way we can extract this is by first cutting cabbage. So this is the first part we do. We cut cabbage into fine pieces. So we shred it. So we have our whole one and then we shred it into pieces. Then once we have that, those shreds, the smaller parts, we place those shredded cabbage into a beaker. So we grab a beaker, put that, those shredded things in. This is meant to be the beaker. And then, we'll, so should take the shredded cabbage, put it in the beaker, and we add some water. So you can just imagine this white stuff to be a water. So we add water to our shredded cabbage. And then put it under the hot plate. So anything that gives you a flame and produces heat. So then we put it under heat. So place shredded cabbage into beaker and add water. Then put on hot plate or anything that makes it warmer and bring to near boil. So boil all this together to that near boiling stage. And once it's at that stage, you take it off and you allow it to cool. So we've taken our cabbage, finely diced it, put it into water and into beaker, boil that, that actual beaker and then let it cool. And then we have had, now we have our extract. So solution is what we want, the solution is what we want. We'll also have some leftovers. So some of that, you know, that hard stuff we don't want. We get rid of the hard stuff. We just pour the extract, the solution we want, and we pour that extract into new beaker. And a new beaker will be our indicator. In this case, the cabbage indicator. And we do the exactly the same thing for the flower petal. So first we cut the flowers into smaller bits. Then we place the flowers in a beaker. 
and add some water, just like we did with the other one. Add some water into that beaker. What we do then is we bring it to that near boil and let it cool afterwards. Same thing as with the cabbage. Once we've done that, we remove the solution, which is the solution is what we want. That's our indicator. So we remove the solution and put that into new beaker. And the leftovers, so the waste, we just get rid of that. So all the hard bits. So now we have two extracts. We have the cabbage extract, which is our cabbage indicator. And we have our flower or petal extract, which is our petal indicator. And what we do is then we set up our test tubes. We've got five test tubes. I said at least five test tubes. The reason why is because one of the test tubes will get our hydrochloric acid we put in. So our strong acid will be put in one of the test tubes. Acetic acid, which was that here, will be the other test tube. Ammonia, our weaker base will be put in the third test tube. Sodium hydroxide, stronger base into the fourth. And our tap water, this is meant to be our neutral solution, 7 pH of about 7, will be put in the fifth um, test tube. And then what we do is we just put our indicator. So our cabbage indicator, we put that into each of them. See what it does in terms of color change. So there'll be color changes for each of these, or there might not be. But then we can use that to estimate what actually happened. So that's for the cabbage. And then what we can do still is after using the cabbage, we use the petal. So we do all of this again, rinse out our test tubes and refill them with our acids and our bases and our tap water and use a petal indicator by putting them into the actual beakers and observing any changes for that petal indicator. Right, so for this experiment, you actually made your own indicator, which is what they would have done some 200 years ago that we used natural indicators so that we just made them ourselves. So it's quite easy to make, and that experiment would have shown you how easy it was to make. And the only obviously big disadvantage when it comes to natural indicators is, especially when we make them ourselves, they don't last as long as synthetic indicators. So the new ones, they can last a bit longer, store for a bit longer, whereas these natural ones, they, they, they go bad pretty fast. Hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.